Hey everyone! In this video, we'll learn about how shiny objects reflect light. Let's start with a mirror. When a photon hits a mirror, it bounces off, just like a ping pong ball. Let's look at this from a different angle. You can pretend this photon comes from behind the mirror instead of the front. The result is the same. It's as if there's a parallel world behind the mirror, where photons just pass through rather than bounce off. This mirror world is a reflection of the real world across the mirror. Everything is backwards in the mirror world. For example, the text on the shirt is reversed. You see this every time you look in the mirror. You are flipped horizontally. But why don't mirrors flip you vertically as well? To answer this question, let's set up a coordinate system where the x and y axes are parallel to the mirror and the z-axis points in the perpendicular direction. Points in the real world have positive z-values. Points in the mirror world are negative. The mirror inverts the z-value of every point in front of it. Let's see what this does to our friend. You can see the back of his body passes through his front. That's gotta hurt. There's actually another way of achieving the same transformation. Instead, you can rotate 180 degrees about the y-axis and then invert x, a horizontal reflection. This is mathematically equivalent. You can see it produces the same result as the z-inversion. And there's even a third interpretation. Try rotating 180 degrees about the x-axis and then invert y. We've just seen three equivalent ways of expressing the mirror transformation. As a depth inversion, a horizontal rotation and inversion, or a vertical rotation and inversion. Our brains seem to prefer the middle interpretation. That's probably because it's easy for us to imagine just walking around to the other side of the mirror. Plus our bodies have bilateral symmetry, so we don't notice the horizontal flip that much. But the actual physics follows the one on the left. The mirror reflects an incoming ray about the z-direction. When the surface is curved, it works the same way, but there's not a single z-direction. Instead, an incoming ray reflects across the surface normal n. Okay. How about this penny? It's shiny, but it's not quite a mirror. Let's zoom in for a closer look. This is what a penny looks like under a scanning electron microscope. Pretty cool, right? It's like a landscape full of plains and cliffs. So while the flat parts of the surface act like a mirror, others deflect photons in slightly different directions. The result is a blurry mirror reflection. So if we zoom out, we see incoming light gets reflected in multiple directions near the mirror ray R. This is called specular reflection. How can we model specular reflection? The most accurate approach is to directly measure how the surface reflects light by photographing it repeatedly under different illuminations. You can then fit a function that measures how much light you see for each incoming and outgoing angle. This kind of function has a long name. It's called a bidirectional reflectance distribution function, or just BRDF for short. But measuring BRDFs isn't always practical, so researchers have come up with models that approximate common materials. Here's a simple model. We want the brightness to fall off away from the reflected direction R. So let's look at the angle between R and the viewing direction V. Taking the cosine of this angle causes brightness to fall off slowly, which we can also write as V dot R. Here's what this reflection model looks like for a sphere. We can get a sharper highlight by raising it to a power. Because light can't be negative, we clamp the minimum to zero. This is called Fong reflection, and it's pretty popular in computer graphics. Here's what it looks like if we move the light source. To get more natural looking specular highlights, you can try this model instead. Here we take the halfway vector between L and V and use the angle between that vector and the surface normal N. This is called the Blin-Fong model and it gives more symmetric looking highlights. Compare this with Fong which has a bit more distortion. Fong and Blin-Fong are just the simplest models. There are many other BRDF models that are significantly more accurate. But what gives an apple that distinctive look? Or an orange? Or a wood floor? 
Stay tuned for part two.